Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what should be an intriguing matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paul Brown Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gunn to my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they've been the talk of the NFL so far. Nine wins in their first nine games. And some people subscribe to the theory that a loss might not be the worst thing for them. They've had it easy all year long. How would they do handling adversity? Two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. And the drive starts with a completion, left side. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you gotta feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. And they'll try the jet sweep here. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. That's a game seven. They'll look to throw here. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Miles Garrett, he's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. That'll be a 47-yard punt, officially five on the return. And the Browns will take over, first and ten. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. They'll be led out by the number one overall pick in the 2018 draft, the Oklahoma Sooner, Baker Mayfield. It's a pretty bland game he had last time out. Ended up throwing one interception. Didn't have a touchdown to offset it. But the team found a way to win. He found a way to lean on other parts of the offense that carried them through. They go play action here on first down. And he's got his man on the crossing route. That's Landry. That throw good for four. It's second down. This offense has a lot to account for, but at the top of the defense's list is OBJ. I'm not sure how you really game plan for him because no matter what you do, he finds a way to uncover himself downfield. And the speed gets it from his mom, a former sprinter at LSU. 
to throw again on second down. Mayfield and finding the tight end, Hooper. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11-yard pickup. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. First carry for Nick Chubb. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Defensive starters, here they are for Cincinnati. We know they're going to be tough to throw on. Top three in the NFL defending the pass. Take those rankings, throw them right out the window. Because this is what you prepare for. This is what you practice for. This is what you think about. The ultimate test. Taking on the number one overall offense in the league. They go with Chubb on second down. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself a, you give yourself the best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 down at the 31. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. A check on the numbers for Chubb from a week ago. Two trips to the end zone and well past 100 yards. And going back and watching the film, we saw every kind of run from him, didn't we? We saw some power. We saw finesse. We saw speed. And what I love the most, he finished each and every run. From the 25 on second down, Mayfield going for it all. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. Mayfield from the gun on third down. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate. Gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. As I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. They'll give it to Chubb. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. They'll try again with Chubb, and he takes this one in for a Brown score. Nick Chubb hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator and oh, remember yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. Extra point up and good by Folk. And that makes the score 7-0. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. 
The numbers for Mixon last week. 20 carries, 79 yards, and a touchdown. He's having a nice season, and he knows where he ranks in the league. Don't ever let a running back tell you that they don't know that. They do. So what he's doing now is lobbying the offensive coordinator all week long. Hey, how about a few more touches? He's one big game away from maybe leading the league. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Time for a look at our starters here on defense against the pass. Just numbers that they haven't liked. Number 30 in the league right now. You know, when actors get ready for a scene, they often ask the question, what's my motivation? But what's the motivation of this group? What's their mindset? What's the problem that they have? Will they create an identity that allows them to get better? So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon and give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. They'll look to throw. This pass complete to Higgins. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 38-yard line. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 38. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Andrew Billings, what an effort from him on that play. Big tackle for a loss of 11. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. some hot water now after that sack it's second and 21 from the gun to give to Mixon and forget about finding a lane he barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield this will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they're bringing your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football. Because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. Now a play fake here on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Brandon, 
if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Play fake, Mayfield. It's caught, Beckham. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb, and he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? It's important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. A run for Nick Chubb. Now a stoppage, and oh, we've got Chubb shaken up on the play. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The Browns on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. Here it's third and three. They'll try to run for the first down with Hunt. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll be a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. This is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit, thanking them for that much space to rumble. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Back to Mixon on first down. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7 nothing ball game. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Now back to throw. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created. Down the numbers. There he goes. And he'll score. Touchdown, Browns. Third down, passing down. They throw the extra defensive back in there for a nickel package, and it worked out. And it's not anything that you would think is just great strategy. It's just that when you have five defensive backs on the field and an obvious passing down, it's a lot tougher to complete a pass. And on that play, they completed it just to the wrong team, and it cost them six points. On 
time for the extra point is Folk. And it's good to make it 14-0. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. Throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. He'll look to throw. And that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And he uncorks a beauty. Best of the day. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Beckham and the Browns set to take over again. Sitting right around the midpoint of the season, on pace for 1,000 yards. Good year so far, and I'm sure film study being devoted to him a little bit more on the other side. They have to, because the pace that he's carrying right now, if you're, if you're pushing a 1,000-yard pace as a receiver, that means he warrants your attention. And right now, precision is going on with their offense. Kind of like that timepiece you wear on your wrist. You know, that good stuff. You've got to knock that off somehow. Chip away at that time and change things up a little bit and make them go to other things and make them do those things better. Yeah, try to make them uncomfortable. Not many teams have been able to do that so far this year. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 37. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. That's now a second interception in as many weeks from his linebacker position. And think about all the different techniques he has to employ in a passing situation. Is he spot dropping because it's zone? Is he picking up man-to-man? -man? Is he having to run with a running back or a tight end? In any event, great eyes, head on a swivel, and excellent hands. Yeah, versatility and showing those hands. Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He has not had the game that he envisioned. His team has not had the game that they've envisioned here. So how do they turn this around now? But right now, what he's looking forward to doing is finding a way to get the added weight on his back. Is it like that monkey that Steve Young was talking about? Remember that in the Super Bowl? Oh, the 95 Super Bowl. Right, when they beat the Chargers, and, you know, he had yep. that weight of expectations and, and pass greats on his back. In this case, it's just bad play. Can he shake it off and then be able to play loose and free and help his team out? Let's see if he can do just that. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. A first chance in the red zone for the Bengals now. They've got a first and 10 at the 11. He'll look to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. 
And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. you got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try and add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going my way, I have a little bit of a cushion. Let's go ahead and try and extend things. If you've got some good plays drawn up, you might want to think about them right here. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Mayfield now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. Eight of 10, it's first down. Here's Mayfield. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, all right, Brandon. Thank you very much. Hi again, everyone. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL as we are officially into the second half of the season. We'll begin up at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. And it's the Ravens out in front as that game moves towards halftime. Two touchdown passes there for Lamar Jackson. From there, we head down to the Sunshine State to check on the Jaguars at home in Jacksonville. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Buffalo Bills. Philip Dorsett, two touchdown catches on the afternoon. Lastly, let's get you to Charlotte, North Carolina. Check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. And they currently trail in that game against the visiting Patriots. Sony Michelle with two touchdowns thus far. In the game you're watching, it's been Baker Mayfield with a strong first half. His guys have a two-touchdown lead as we hand it back over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Browns to take over. They are working on that very impressive nine-game win streak, looking to get it to 10 as they've got the lead here, first and 10. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start the third quarter on the ground with Hunt. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. They'll run again with Hunt. And he'll lose yardage here. Going down back at the 28. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustments, what they talked about, maybe it was just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop them here on third down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The Clemson product, DJ Reader, got in for the sack. They need a staff to get back into this game, and here's one right to start in the third quarter. Yeah, anytime you go to the lockers with that two, three score deficit, you're right. You need that stop, get the football back, and they've done just that. Series to series, play to play. Here's Jamie Gillen now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. A good kick, 48 yards, four on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggles. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. 
He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Open man is Uzama. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They're going to look to throw. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. Got to love the catch. I think you got to love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great. And they're fun. They're becoming a little more ho-hum, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. They really work hard on this one-handed catch thing. But I think the gloves have to be helping in a big way. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Heading out is the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get him about five yards. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. From the 24, Mayfield. Rush coming and he's taken down. Like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. Mayfield and this Browns offense staring at a third and long now after the sack. They go play action. Mayfield. Oh, he's got a man wide open. Complete. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Off the draw, here's Johnson. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. They'll run with Hunt on second down. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. First down, they'll run with Hunt. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They run again with Hunt. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. 
It's a loss of two, now third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Mayfield now from the 50. And all oh, this is taking him one-handed. What a catch. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of 10 yards on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. What a catch and one-handed, and I'm starting to lose my awe about the play, and maybe I shouldn't. How much of this is the player? How much of it is the glove? Well, those gloves, they do have a little grip to them, They don't get that they? little extra tackiness to them now, and I know the guys in the NFL, the competition committee, some other places, they're talking about examining those gloves to see if they're having too much of an effect on the game. Now, meanwhile, over in Baltimore, and the Ravens have opened things up there. Lamar Jackson with three touchdown passes to help lead the way. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we're talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right. Keeping hope alive. Second down and in inches. And the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Back to throw now on first down. Now they set up the screen, that's complete. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. The Bengals on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This is third and seven. They'll look to throw here. Open man is Higgins. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. They run for it with Mixon. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. On their own side of the field, close to the 50, but their own side of the field, they only needed a couple of inches, and they were able to get it done. And it doesn't matter whether you're a zone-blocking team, a man-blocking team, gap-blocking, whatever you want to call it. When it's in this situation, it's really man-on-man, -man, isn't it? Who's going to win the battle? And right there, we saw it at the point of attack find enough yardage to pick up a first down. Give him credit for that one. Back to throw. He gets this one to Boyd. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Second and two. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. After the incompletion here now, third and two. They'll set up the throw. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Ready, ready. 54 Mike. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. You remember me? You remember me? 
On first down, Evans. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Nixon. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And they're going to face a third down. Another example of just a dominant performance by this defense. Yeah, you hear all the time about teams that try to steal signals from the other side and try and learn their signs and their tendencies. It's almost like they got the answers to the exam the night before and were well prepared for this final. Hey, watch that, watch that. Check. Ready, go. A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. They get the first. The decision to run on third and medium winds up being a good one. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. On play action, they'll throw. Got an open man. That's C.J. Uzama. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. C.J. Uzama, his second touchdown on the season as his guys are back within a single score. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know. It doesn't feel right. Exactly. Extra point splits the uprights. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. I think you'd have to say defensively, these guys are doing their job pretty well, right? Yeah, we talked about them holding them under 20 points, right, on defense. And they've done that. They've held them. The problem is their own offense hasn't answered their challenge, which was to score more. Yeah, exactly. I remember you saying magic number was right around 20, and the offense has been the issue. You're right. They go play action here on first down. It's caught by OBJ. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That'll move the sticks for the Browns. A gain of 12. Fourth quarter down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a first and 10 as they look to try and finish this one off. They'll run on first down. It's Hunt looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and 10. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Hunt, and he'll get this across the 40 and up to about the 42-yard line. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Mayfield the throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Here's Jamie Gillendale. He's been terrific so far. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. So now the Bengals down by seven. At time, a huge factor. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and ten. Go now. 
He's back to throw. He finds his running back, Mixon. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. He'll look to throw. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed. In and, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off near the 42. All day, all day. Oh, and that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air, and then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. Get him! Get him! Get him! Check, check. Break down! Break down! The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. And they'll indeed take a knee. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. They'll go ahead and take the knee here and the unbeaten season will continue. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on for the fifth time here today. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And it was a bit of a strange game. They were held scoreless through the entire second half, but their first half output, that's enough to carry them to victory. And that's an odd game to watch, isn't it? Because when we saw the output in the first half, you think to yourself, okay, they've got something working here. They know what they're doing. They'll continue that along. But instead, it's goose eggs in the second half. Fortunately, enough of a cushion and enough defense to carry them home. So for the Browns, they keep on rolling 10-0 now to start the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to New England to take on the Patriots. Meanwhile, for Cincinnati, their season is on life support somewhat now at 3-6. And, and they're going to get an extra week to stew over this as they're not back in action until week 11. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.